What's up everybody, welcome back to Total Exposed and in this quick tip video I'm going to show you how best to archive your Final Cut Pro 10 projects. Let's do this. Okay, so let's keep this one quick. Really quick tip, um, you finished your project in Final Cut Pro 10 you're looking to archive it, maybe you're putting it in the cloud or you're sticking it on a NAS or wherever or maybe just a hard drive somewhere in the corner. Um, let's have a look at how we archive our projects when we're done with them. Let's jump over to the computer. So here is a project that we did recently. This was um, the, the Canon C200 uh, kind of quick setup guide video that we did. Um, and it, was, it ended up being fairly big. Let's have a little look at the folder here. So let's call it 250 gig. So if we were going to archive this, we could just obviously copy the whole folder and stick it somewhere, but we could make the file size significantly smaller because as you'll see, a lot of that is kind of render files and preview files that we don't necessarily need to store. So if we open up the project in Final Cut Pro, you'll see the, the, or the, the timeline that we did. Um, so because we've got our preferences set to automatically do background rendering, it's gonna be creating loads of render files, well, in the background as the name suggests. We don't need to be keeping those when we're archiving. So let's go back to the folder structure. And if we have a look in here, um, in the actual project itself, you'll see that the size of this file, this is where it will save all of its render files inside here. Um, if we have a look at, we're getting through on this, this is 55 gig just on its own. So the way that we do it is actually within Final Cut Pro itself. If I click up here, so you can see over here there's 55 gig in the cache. We can delete that just within the program. You haven't even got to worry about doing it in the file structure. So if I click on, um, well, make sure you've got the library selected. So click on the library and then go to File, Delete Generated Library Files. And it says here that you can't undo this, but all you're doing is just generating render files that it's done in the background anyway. So I'm going to delete render files and I'm going to say all of them. And we don't have any optimized or proxy media here, but I'll tick them anyway and click OK. That will actually go and delete them. It might take a second. Um, So if we go and have a look now back in Finder at the size of this file, here's the library file. You can see here, 8.57 gig. So it's still quite big, but um, not 50 odd gig. So if we have a look at the whole folder, we've just shrunk it by 50 gig. Um, now you could go through and you could actually organize your media further so you could see if there's any unused clips that you didn't even use in your project and you could delete those out and stuff. But this is how we tend to do it, just to delete the render files and it gets the project to a, the cleanest state that you can for just archiving it. So hopefully that video was helpful. If it was, give it a little like down below. Consider subscribing to our channel for more quick tip tutorials, especially to do with Final Cut Pro and we'll catch you in the next one.